Oh, heck. <laughs> the apples were bruised. Hey, Mr. Goat. Uh, look what I got for you. I was hoping the goat would be more friendly now. Look what I got for you, little fella. Look what I got for you, little fella. This would make a good yarn. Look what I got for you, little fella. Oh boy, you're gonna love this. I distracted the goat, but it wouldn't take him long to eat that apple. The goat now had a whole pile of apples to tuck into. I tossed him my last apple. Hello, little one. Hello. Don't suppose you have any more of those rich tea biscuits? I've had it up to here with apples. I can tell you. Mon dieu, a talking goat. So it's true. Goats can talk. Only when really animated. Josh has a real thing about goats. I know. Truth is, if it wasn't for George's fear of goats... Yes? We'd never get it cast again, would we? Don't tell anyone, no, will you? Or terrible wrath will descend upon you, etc., etc., etc. Until next time, my sweet. <laughs> Today we'll be talking to none other than George Stobart. 
Hey, Josh. Thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me on. Why did you actually go to Paris all those years ago? I was getting over a breakup. I thought Paris would be a good place to recover. Peaceful, foreign, exotic, and with so many beautiful women. Who knew? If that explosion had never happened, what do you think you would be doing now? I'd probably be a lawyer, you know, making lots of money. Of course, doing work for the greater benefit of mankind. Beautiful wife, 2.3 beautiful children, a pet. Maybe a goat. Have you ever thought about changing your beautiful hairstyle? Actually, uh, I have already. Uh, a number of times. Five, in fact, I think. What is your definition of happiness? A puzzling, thrilling adventure with Nico at my side. Uh, and she's in a good mood, too, of course. Amazing. The light is showing the path, the path of the Bonzon. The what? The sacred trail my ancestors took across the Pyrenees, carrying the Tabula Veritatis, from Montsegur, across the mountains, to this town. And which town is that? I don't know. That I cannot answer. But its coat of arms is quite distinctive. This was one of the locations highlighted on the fresco. And this was the starting point of the journey of the Bonon, the good man, the Cathars, right? So, the coat of arms on the fresco pointed us towards Berga. Then it must be important. Two locations down. If the vignettes on the painting were anything to go by, I needed to find two more. The Dominican monk Emmerich was from Girona, the dog-headed priest on the painting. I'd found three locations. Now I had to track down the last one. The village of San Ramon. San Ramon. Ramon told me he was named after a, a Saint Ramon. There's also a saint on the painting. Let me guess, he has a hefty padlock through his lips? I could see a pattern emerging. The locations had formed an odd cross shape, similar to the layout of the orbs depicted on the painting. This is the center point of the cross, so the tabula must be here. Montserrat, it has to be Montserrat. The question is, what's Montserrat? It's a monastery in the mountains, quite a tourist spot, but there's something else. Trevor could help, but I couldn't just throw him in there. I set him down at the edge where it was safe. Go, Trevor, go! Poor Trevor looked like he needed therapy, but the console was working. I sprayed the shavings with bread. Delightful. I added the flowers to the mix. Supercharged potpourri. For a moment, I imagined falling forever in the dark. But it was just my imagination running wild. The floor was solid. I imagined that Trevor, my vicious attack cockroach, had chased away the figments of my imagination. It made me feel better.
I pictured Trevor, fending off the creatures of the night like a faithful hound. My mood lifted. I had defeated the imaginary hazards before me using only the power of my mind. Langham had better watch out. Nico! What? Is this what I think it is? It must be the Tabula Veritatis. So Genan did find it. It's so small, so innocent looking. Why would Simeon call it evil? Why so many deaths for this? And why go to such lengths to keep it hidden? Unless it is as genuinely dangerous as Simeon claimed. The question now is, what do we do with it? The photograph was of an ancient clay tablet. Ganon had written on it. The guard was already pretty worked up. The hammer hit the guard on the head with enough force to knock him out. If what you create in topiary is predetermined, what's the point? Topiary isn't about freedom of expression. It's haughty cultural valium. It makes the voices stop. You never intended to kill Henri? I just wanted to rough him up a little. But the gun went off and the rest is history. Free will didn't come into it. But you'd made a choice not to shoot him. The fact he died was an accident. Hmm. So you think I've got a chance of redemption? See? You didn't choose to kill Henri. He died regardless. Exactly! It was accidental homicide. If by redemption you mean a spell in jail with damn off a good behavior, then yes, I think there is a chance for you. And you know what? No, enlighten me. I'm getting too old for this crime, Lark. I think I'm having an epiphany. Of course, it might just be indigestion. <coughs> No, it's definitely an epiphany. I think you're right. The only thing that has led me here is me and my actions. I'm going to talk to the boss. He's sure to listen to reason. Boss! Boss! What is it, you imbecile? How many times have I told you not to interrupt me when I'm about to kill somebody? Remember what we agreed. I am the big man who takes care of the big things. And I am the little man who takes care of the little things. <laughs> exactly. So, haven't you got a little thing you should be doing? Hmm. There is one little thing, now you mention it. Well, don't let me stop you. Get on with it, you big baboon. If you say so, boss. Oh. Oh, dear. There you go. Free will under orders. Now that is what I call a real paradox. Don't listen to them, George. They're both wrong. Maintain the harmony. Protect the balance. But how do I... You have the answer in your hands, George. In my hands? Uh, what do you mean? Josh? Josh, wake up. You were dreaming. What? What? Oh. Hey, Sears.
Want a cookie? Blimey! Rich tea! What's the special occasion? You're too kind. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh. I knew it was a sausage. Shears knew it was a sausage. But one tiny length of fuse wire and... Voila! Dynamite! Nico, a hand please? You seem to have a bond with these creatures. I hope you're not thinking of harming Donna. Trust me, a cunning six-phase plan is for me. Wholly approved by all the major animal rights organizations. Just keep her still for a second. Why have you attached the sausage to Donna? That's phase one. Now, watch as the others come together. If it's all the same to you, I'll watch from over there. I had a fake piece of dynamite strapped to the goat. Phase one of my plan, complete. Now, I just had to figure out phases two to six. That should do the trick. I had an idea. I wonder just how much that goat liked figs. Hey, goat. Want a fig? Cry havoc and let slip the goats of war. Oh, hello, goaty. <laughs> oh. uh, fellas, what's he got round his neck? Looks like. Oh my god, Scarpa! about, I've been thinking about supper. 
How does a nice barbecue tickle your fancy? I think you'd better have this, don't you? My father gave his life to find it. Now I must spend mine protecting it. How? Where will you go? To Catalonia. I have a house and a chapel to restore. And a new life to build as a Gnostic leader. You know, Nico, this time I really wasn't sure if we were going to make it. Perhaps we had the gods on our side. Or whatever those powers were. Maybe you're right. You know, we make a great team. Um, we could be more than a team. Uh -huh. Before this all started, back in Paris, I was just about to invite you out to... Oi! Dinner is served! Fantastic. Uh, what's on the menu? Donut kebabs with a spicy fig compote. Wait, Donna as in Donna? But Nico, I thought you loved goat. 